Hey, what's up? This is William Neff, and this is my take on Batman vs Superman: The Dawn of Justice. So now I'm gonna put on my comic book nerd hat, and we're gonna get to the ranty, ravey, crazy section of this review where I spoil the shit out of everything. So if you're not in the market for that, please shut your laptop, run away from your computer, and pretend you never clicked on this link because I'm going deep. So first of all, wow, there is a lot going on in this film. If you've already seen it, you know that there is no teaser trailer or stinger at the end of the credits. Why? Because the whole fucking movie is a teaser trailer. This movie is not setting up one or two films. This movie is trying to set up a decade slate of maybe 15 films. And I am not embellishing in any way. The universe that they are introducing is huge and they did not keep it small. I'm not sure that I was correct in seeing this or that this was what they were implying, but there is a scene where Batman is walking through the Batcave and he glimpses to his right and what shall we see? But the outfit of the second Robin, Jason Todd, with yellow graffiti on it, from the Joker, inferring that a Robin has already died, meaning that there has already been two Robins in this universe, potentially three, which means that there is an active Nightwing, Dick, Dick Grayson. We have the introduction of Cyborg, who is a Teen Titans member. I mean, we are really universe building here. We have Lex Luthor's bodyguard, Mercy, make a two second appearance before she's blown up, but because she kind of has this android, superhuman, metahuman element, she might be back. We have what may be Impulse cutting through to Batman in a dream, meaning the grandson, the grandson of Flash. We're not talking about Kid Flash, we're talking about generations later, the grandson. The undertaking that DC is trying here is really cool. You will have moments as a comic book fan where you go, wow, fucking neat. Thank you. Thank you for doing these things that we'd like to see on screen. And for that, I applaud Batman vs Superman. Um, there are moments that are awesome and the scale is so cool. Was I fully disappointed? No, in fact, I felt myself really compelled at times, like edge of my seat, kind of like, oh my gosh, they're showing Aquaman. This is so cool. This is such a cool setup for Aquaman. There are those elements that will drag you into that DC universe if you are a DC fan. Now let's talk about the failures. First of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. What the fuck happened to Lex Luthor? Schneider looked at the archetype for Lex Luthor and went, okay, who was Lex Luthor when the comic book series was made? He was a, a tycoon, an oil tycoon, a railroad tycoon, old money, and he's brilliant and blah, 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 blah. And he went, who would this man be in 2016? A tech billionaire. That's brilliant. So when he has Eisenberg in for a reading, he goes, let's just have him reprise all the things that everyone hated about Zuckerberg on screen again. Let's tweak this character. Let's make him a tech billionaire. Let's make him a Google exec. Let's make him a Snapchat chat exec. Let's have him wear poor fitting clothes and novelty t-shirts. This will be hilarious. This will be a unique take. I'm okay with that. The problem is nothing about Eisenberg's portrayal remains true to the Lex Luthor character. Let me say that again. Nothing about his character is true. The elegant, well thought out, reserved, genius that is Lex Luthor feels more like a Joker ripoff than a tribute to the original. It literally feels like someone was trying to cash in on the successful elements of the Joker character and cut and paste them over Lex Luthor, which is almost offensive to someone who knows how awesome Lex Luthor can be. And then the other thing is Lex Luthor 
kind of just feels like he wants to destroy the whole planet, and that's not really his bag at all. The other thing that's really upsetting is the whole film builds up to Lex Luthor cloning Connor Kent. I mean, he takes Kryptonian DNA, and he takes his own DNA, and he makes a clone, but what comes out of the bubble is Doomsday? That equation just doesn't make sense. As a comic book reader, when I saw that cloning process happening, I went, holy crap, we're going to see Connor Kent come out of this cloning tube, which kind of would have been a much more uh, sympathetic character. Doomsday is kind of just this juggernaut, this unspeakable alien that doesn't have any lines, who you almost feel bad for. I mean, if you were born two seconds before having to fight Superman, it's a really shitty existence. No wonder he's confused and scared. He's born out of a tube, and already there are people trying to kill him. It, 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 it felt forced. And to see Connor Kent fight Superman, that's a character that can process emotions. That's a character that can speak. Uh, that's a character that is sympathetic, and it builds more of this world. It brings in Young Justice. It brings in Teen Titans. And it does more of this world building instead of just making a villain that essentially pays off all the flaws of Man of Steel. Again, we have these two non-sympathetic characters just banging heads, just destroying the fucking planet. Who cares? You didn't earn that. You didn't make these characters sympathetic, and so we don't care. And so we have these massive mountains of, of visual spectacle that are so fucking compelling with hollow characters that you haven't paid off. And part of the problem with that is I paid attention, and this film is confusing at its core. And there were just little things you could have removed to make it more streamlined. Clark Kent talking to his dead father on top of a mountain? What does this have to do with anything? And do you pay it off at all? Do you even show that it was a dream sequence? Not really. It's just bizarre. DC, you have such cool elements. You have a foundation here. Whether it be a foundation full of holes or not, you have a foundation. Please take this franchise away from Zack Schneider. He has not paid off what he should have. He's built this world, but left it feeling hollow. Allow someone else to have one of these characters, like Aquaman or Flash or Cyborg, and make a film where we care about this character. And then bring back the grand scale world that you've hinted at. But you haven't earned the scale that you are playing to right now. You need to set up a baseline for us. You need to make characters we care about because that is the fundamentals of storytelling. That is the fundamentals of film and you don't have them, which is why you have a split audience on this film. Every critic is gonna watch this and say it's a piece of crap because there are piece of crap elements to it. And every fan is gonna see it and kind of love it like I did in spite of myself because there are characters that I grew up with, things that I love, and elements to this story that are completely unique. You know, this is not Marvel, and I appreciate that. Zack Schneider made a real world, and that's kind of where DC lives. Marvel, a lot of their superheroes, their attitude is, wow, isn't it cool to be a superhero? Whereas DC, it's much more of like a real world kind of, isn't it droll to be a superhero? You know, life is even more difficult as a superhero, and I love that. So Zack Schneider, thank you for making this world real because there is real attention to it, it is painstaking, and it would have been much easier to have the spandex jokes that every other superhero franchise makes, but you didn't. So now build on this because you have an opportunity to have a Game of Thrones size universe with real intrigue and real problems and real drama. Anyway, I'm Will Neff. Uh, you might think I'm a total idiot. I kind of do myself, but that's my take on Batman vs Superman uh, Dawn of Justice. Um, and if you haven't seen it, please go see it and leave a comment what you thought. <laughs>